And I, I wanted to ask you now, how does the mental health field in general approach suicide prevention? But there are ways as a trainer yourself or as a counselor, there are things that you look for, there are ways that you can identify. So can we talk a bit to about that and, and to those who grapple with the thoughts? Generally speaking, suicide is a public health crisis. Um, and each country really addresses suicide prevention um, in their own unique way. The World Health Organization, the CDC, they have guidelines and recommendations for how to help support um, sort of more on a, on, a, on a macro scale of how to support um, suicide prevention. Here in the United States, you know, there's a, a big push for people talking about it. They just recently came out with a new hotline that mimics 911. It is 988. And this is a, um, a crisis line. Um, the idea behind it was really to have a three digit number that you could access for a mental health crisis. Similarly, the way you would for any other crisis of contacting 911, you contact 988. That kind of jumps out to me in terms of just like more global um, resources available. So for people who experience suicidal ideation, I just really want to address address you specifically. I think that oftentimes it can be very isolating, thinking like you're the only one that has these thoughts or feelings. And I think that knowing that you are not alone, knowing that there are resources available, oftentimes when we are experiencing suicidal thoughts, there can be like things that, that trigger that. So it might be like a situation or an argument or something like, you know, a performance review at work or for a lot of teens, it's when they get their report card, right? It's like just sort of this, this thing that happens that they know and that they can kind of expect that then triggers these thoughts of suicidal ideation. Um, and so when we really understand what our triggers are, we can really take steps to try to prevent them or support ourselves throughout that experience. Now, sometimes things happen that we can't really predict or, or prepare for. And so I think just, you know, really understanding that you're not alone. There are crisis resources that are both text lines where you can text and talk to a crisis counselor or phone lines that you can call and speak to somebody. Um, I think, you know, for ourselves, we can think about it, think about suicidal ideations as, as a wave. And there's sort of like the buildup of the wave that's coming and then it peaks and then it comes down. And so what we're trying to do is we can and think about it like riding the wave. We're riding this wave of really tense emotions that we know is going to come, it's going to change, just like the wave is going to change, right? It's going to it's smooth out. And so we just need to get, get through that. And so there's apps, there's crisis resources. There's a really great app that um, I recommend called Calm Harm. And it's um, designed for consumers who need recommendations or ideas of how do I get through this? How do I get through? How do I ride the wave of this really intense emotion? You know, there's things that you can do like journal. You can take care of yourself by going on a walk. You can take a warm shower. You can distract yourself with, you know, watching something funny on, on TV. Whatever it is that you need to do, you can call a friend. Um, you know, you can reach out to a crisis hotline and and seek support from a professional, um, really just to, to get yourself through that. Is there any advice that you can give to persons who uh, in the moment don't have the capacity to reach for anything? They're with themselves, they're having these ideations, as you mentioned, but they can't reach for their phone to go to the app or they haven't practiced journaling or they don't want to write or they don't want to do anything. Is there any anything that you can say to them that they can help them through those really, really tough moments? Remembering that you're not alone in these feelings and that they are going to pass. You can think about our feelings and emotions similarly to clouds, right? The cloud is there, but it's also moving. And eventually the cloud is going to be gone, just like our feeling is going to be gone eventually. So we have to just pre 
provide ourselves the opportunity to get through it and let it pass. Whatever it is that is going on, suicide isn't the answer. Oftentimes people think about suicide as an answer to a problem, but if we think about all the problems in our lives, they eventually pass, right? We find a way through them. And so even if in the moment, it seems like there is no other way, just holding on to that belief that you can get through hard things because you have before and you will again. You can get through hard things. And I think too, it's important to remind people that there is a higher power God that considers you valuable. Even if life gives you all the information or all this evidence to, to convince you that you're not, that by your very existence, by the fact that you are here and you're still breathing, which is a miracle. I don't think people realize how much of a miracle it is to wake up every single day and have breath that because you are still here, you have worth and you have value. If, even if your feelings can't meet you there, you don't feel worthy, you don't have the evidence that, you know, the life is not giving you the information that you are worthy. You have to know that you are because you just are here. When we take a step back and talk to other people, right? Other people would, would confirm that 100% about you. Yes. And so I think really just allowing yourself to to exist, to be, to give, to continue to give the gift of you being here is just so important. Well, if this is something that you you struggle with as much as possible, build a practice around, you know, your spiritual beliefs or, you know, whether it's find a religious group or whatever it is, uh, just something on YouTube to watch, just, just mm -hmm. remind you on a daily basis that you're worthy. And a lot of times this is also when people come into therapy, right? It's like all of my coping skills aren't working anymore. And that's often when I see people and they come into therapy because being in community with a therapist, you get to build that together. It's not just you trying to come up with all these ideas and strategies. It's really working together and and having some guidance through that process and finding those things that are effective for you to help you through that process. And my mom was really struggling with alcoholism and I was, I was pretty young. I was a teenager. Um, I think for me, the motivator was to have something different in my life, right? To really be able to learn from my environment what I, what I didn't want um, for my future and for my future family. Um, and so I really leaned on creating a sense of community with my teachers, with my coaches, with my school community. I really kind of threw myself into academia um, and saw that as my way out, was if I can just stay on this path, then I can create the foundation for a better life for myself. And that's really what kind of got me into into this work I think that's so powerful um in that you know especially for teens or people who lose some someone they they often either throw themselves into work or they throw themselves into school uh but they they find this incredible discipline somewhere or whether they they get locked in on working out and that thing then becomes a vehicle for them through through life. And they find confidence in, in just the, the way that they pour into that thing and the way it gives back to them. And I think that's, a, that's an important tool that if you are experiencing those, those thoughts, look for something that you can see yourself throwing yourself into and just committing wholeheartedly while obviously seeking help. But you know, give yourself something to hold on to that then becomes the vehicle out of this period of time. And honestly, even just talking about your experience can be extremely um, impactful for other people. 
So being vulnerable, talking about it, because you're not alone. You're not the only one going through this, even though it feels like it in the moment. And I think that can be very inspiring for other people who might be, you know, right on your tail and looking for some hope. Like you can really embody that. All of this is such great information. And I really hope that as we are, you know, as people are listening, as we're given this, this information, uh, for those that are watching, that it really is helping, uh, that it opens up some kind of grace within people, some kind of hope as well. I think that's the most important. The, the number one message from this is that there is hope and there's a way out and that what you think that that suicide essentially is not the answer and it can be prevented 